Still here, Quinn Cody. We're out here in Ensenada, Mexico, getting ready for the Baja 1000. Well, we got some more great things to point out and help you guys out at the race this weekend. Quinn, welcome to Baja, buddy. All right, good to see you, George. You know, uh, we definitely talk about the Kurt, you know, Caselli Foundation. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, the Kurt Caselli Foundation was uh, was set up to uh, protect and support the lives of off-road riders and. Um, you know, this race is going to mark uh, one year since we uh, lost Kurt, and um, you know, it's a it's been a big impact on our whole community. And um, you know, we're just here really to try to try to make a difference and help support Score and and uh, you know make this event safer for everyone. Let's talk a little bit about the event itself. That morning that the race starts, you guys actually have a helicopter for the Kurt Caselli Foundation to follow the racers. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we have a, uh, we're calling it a neutral support helicopter and it's going to be up in the air over the race, uh, you know, mainly over the lead riders um, to kind of open the course in front of the, in front of the lead bikes. But we're also going to have a doctor on board, uh, Dr. Alexander, and uh, he's going to be there. So if we receive any calls, emergency calls, we're going to be able to respond with uh, medical help to, uh, you know, any of the competitors. Let's talk a little bit about another thing you guys put in for the safety. Uh, you got some people down at San Ignacio at Rice and Beans. Yeah, we've been working with uh, Rescue 3, who's a great organization out of Southern California, and uh, SCORE, and they're able to put in a, uh, a Midway Point uh, SCORE Ops Command Center. So what it is, uh, racers will be able to stop by at Rice and Beans in San Ignacio and uh, get information on their bikes. There's going to be EMTs there. They'll be able to dispatch medical assistance. And um, you know, it's a new thing. It's never been done before in, in a peninsula run, and uh, we're just really excited to have you know, have something out in the middle of nowhere when where normally the races are just on their own. Yeah, it's kind of a little over halfway down the peninsula in the race, so pretty cool idea. Anything new, I know, on the foundation? I know you're heading the foundation, you're doing some great stuff for that foundation. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, we have a whole bunch of stuff that we've been working on, uh, doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, you know, working with uh, promoters, working with SCORE to try to you know, set minimum uh, safety standards for uh, for different organizations so that, you know, race, race organizations know what standards they need to meet. Um, you know, we also have a scholarship uh, program we're working on. We're going to hopefully uh, award uh, the first Kirk Caselli uh, Memorial Scholarship this uh, in 2015. So, uh, you know, that's a really, really important thing for the Caselli family. And, um, you know, we're just really excited for uh, all this stuff coming up. Well, we know this year, once again, at the 1,000, as we did at the 500, we're going to use the spot tracker and uh, it definitely has some great points on it that we're going to do that right now and kind of point out some of the safety features for that spot tracker. For sure, the spot's a great uh, device, you know, it's a, it's a satellite uh, communicator and so you're, you're able to send and receive or send messages uh, through satellite and as long as everybody knows how to properly use it, it's a great device and um, you know, it can, it can mean a make a difference uh, between saving a life or you know, losing someone in the desert. You know, a good point, you know, on your bike here, on your KTM, you definitely have a mount here for it, um, which you showed us at the 500. We'll talk about that, but putting it in a spot is really important on the bike. Yeah, you know, you want to have the spot in a, in a safe location somewhere where it's not going to get knocked off really easily, but also somewhere where there's a clear view of the sky and somewhere that people are going to be able to see it in the event of an emergency. So, you know, you don't want to have it tucked up underneath the inside the airbox or anything. You know, you want to have it somewhere that's out in the open yet protected. All right, well, let's kind of get the spot tracker out and we'll talk a little bit about, uh, as we zoom in, we'll kind of zoom in here and uh, see what we can do to show you guys out there. What do you... All right, so this is a, this is a holster that we've uh, designed through the Caselli Foundation and a company called Giant Loop to, uh, to kind of house the spot device. And uh, it's designed so it can mount to, uh, you know, a person's body like a backpack strap. Um, or you know a backpack or it can also mount to you know the fork tube of a motorcycle like that or um, you know onto the handlebars and basically um, you know it's just we call it uh, the spot holster and you know it's a really protected device and it's has high visibility um, so inside we have the spot there's a few there's a few buttons on the spot here um, basically for score races the hand-to-hand -hand button is uh, used in a, in a life-threatening medical emergency. So what you do is you flip this little cover up and there's a button inside there and you have to press and hold that button and SCORE will automatically or instantly dispatch medical help to your location. And, and that's used only in the, in the event of a life-threatening medical emergency. 
Um, the next one is called, uh, we call it the bubble button, and that's used for a uh, medical emergency that you need assistance with, but it's non-life threatening. So that's just, you know, the next, the next level down from, from life threatening and, you know, they're going to get help to you as soon as possible. Um, the tracking button, the, um, the score people will press that for you, but the, the uh, spot always needs to be in tracking mode so they can follow your progress, but you don't really have to mess with that. The OK button is the button that's used uh, for a mechanical problem. So if you're stopped, you have a mechanical problem that you need assistance with, you press this and hold this OK button and they will, uh, you know, they know that you have a mechanical and you need help with that. Um, and the last one is the SOS button. And for score races, we don't use this button because it goes to a different command center in a different place. So basically just cover that button up and don't use it. Pretty good, you know, and uh, you know, anything else that you think uh, safe, safe, safety wise for this spotter, you know, spot tracker? Uh, you know, the spot, it's a great device. It's just, you know, it's just a matter of guys using it and, you know, knowing that every bike has it. So if you come upon a person who's uh, been in an accident and, you know, first thing you want to do if they're unconscious or something is go look for their spot and find, you know, find the spot on their bike and press that press that medical emergency button if you if you believe it's a life-threatening medical emergency. You know, Quinn, something we pointed out at the 500, I think we should point this out again. You guys on the motorcycles, uh, you remember, just kind of keep an eye on when those trucks are coming. And uh, don't try to race the trucks like we said before. Get out of the way. Go ahead and talk a little bit about that, Quinn. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's always been a big deal is the trophy trucks catching up with the slower motorcycles. and. You know, a lot of first-time racers have never been passed by a trophy truck, and, and they just don't have any idea how fast the, the trucks will close on a bike. And, you know, you can look over your shoulder one minute and not see anything. You know, 30 seconds later, a truck can be on top of you going 120. So, you know, you really have to stay vigilant um, as you get in the later stage of the race, or if you've started to lose time, if you think you've lost a bunch of time, you know, start pay, paying attention, you know, stop at, on high ground, take a look back, you know, see if see if you see any dust coming. Um, you know, Score's done a good thing with this race. They've set uh, a time gap between the bikes and the trucks of about five hours. So, as long as you you keep progressing in the race, you're not going to get caught by the trophy trucks until after dark. So that's a big deal because you're going to see lights coming. And you know, if it feels like the sun's chasing you down from behind, then there's a trophy truck catching you, and you need to get the hell off the road. And one other point even though that as soon as they go by you, remember, stay over to the right a little bit. There could be a second one coming. These guys could be battling for the lead, so. Yeah, for sure. If you get passed by a trophy truck, I mean, just pull off the course, take a, take a couple minutes, you know, just take a break and let the dust clear. Make sure nobody's coming before you get pulled back on the course. Um, there's no hurry at that point. I mean, you've lost over five hours to the, to the trucks and, you know, your, your race is, you're in survival mode at that point. So, you know, you just want to, make sure you get to the finish line. Well, anything else you think? We covered it all pretty good? Yeah, I think so. Other than, you know, just be heads up out there and, and have a safe race. I mean, the Peninsula run is always a challenge. Um, you know, you, you got to make sure your pit crew guys get plenty of rest before the race and, uh, you know, try not to do anything crazy and allow yourselves plenty of time to, you know, get from, from place to place and, uh, you know, just, just survive it. It's going to be a tough one. All right, well, good luck, guys. We want you guys to be safe, and uh, we'll see you at the finish there in La Paz sometime uh, Friday morning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Quinn Cody right yeah. here. Thanks. Definitely uh, doing a great job representing the Kirk Caselli Foundation, and uh, keep on donating to that foundation. These guys, we need to get some money in there and help uh, do the safety things that he's been doing for this last year. So, all right, we're out of here. All right.